Dear students, welcome to the problem solving session on inverse Z transform by partial fraction method. If Z of f of n is represented as capital F of Z, then this f of n is known to be inverse of Z transform and it is represented by Z inverse of capital F of Z. Now let us recall some formula which we have learned in the previous video on Z transform. So Z of 1 is Z by Z minus 1. When you go for the inverse formula, just we write this as Z inverse of small Z by Z minus 1 is 1 or 1 power n. Then similarly, Z of a power n is Z by Z minus a. When we come for inverse, we say this as Z inverse of Z by Z minus a is a power n. Similarly, we know that z of n is z by z minus 1 whole square. Here we write this as z inverse of z by z minus 1 whole square as n. In the similar way, z of a power n cos n pi by 2 is going to be z square divided by z square plus a square. When you go for inverse, z inverse of z square divided by z square plus a square is equal to a power n cos n pi by 2. Similarly, for sin n pi by 2, we can write the formula like this. A is z divided by z square plus a square. So, just we have to remember all the formula which we have learned in z transform and then we have to use this in the inverse z transform. Here is the typed version of some inverse z transform formulae. Now, I am going to find inverse z transform for the given problem using partial fraction method. So, let us consider an example. Find z inverse of 10 z divided by z minus 1, z minus 2. You know very well the partial fraction method in our school days. Just a quick recap. When I can apply like partial fraction method. I have to check the highest denominator power and highest numerator power. Let us say it as HDP and HNP. Here, the highest denominator power is Z into Z, Z square. That is going to be 2. And highest numerator power is going to be 1. Whenever the highest denominator power is greater than highest numerator power, then only I can go for partial fraction method. Otherwise, I have to do some simplification. This is rule 1. Next, on on the other side, when I want to apply partial fraction method, we should watch one thing. See this formula. What is something common in all the formula? In all the formula, we have z in the numerator. So, without z, I cannot get the inverse answer on the right hand side. So, the second rule is, we know that z inverse of f of z is the given question. Whenever you use partial fraction method, don't do the partial fraction for f of z. Why? Because if you do it, at the end, you will be getting only constant in the numerator. But for my problem, I need z to be in the numerator. So, whenever you do partial fraction method, reserve one z. That means, you do the partial fraction for f of z by z. Then, at the end of the problem, you can take this z from the denominator to the numerator on the other side. Then, it is easy for you to apply the formulae. Let us go into the problem. These are all the problems we are going to solve today. I am going to solve first three problems and the next three problem is going to be a practice problem for yourself. They are almost similar to the first three problems. Okay, let us go into the session. Find z inverse of 10 z divided by z square minus 3 z plus 2. As I said, the given question is z inverse of f of z. My f of z is going to be 10 z divided by z square minus z plus 2. As I said, if you are going to apply partial fraction method, immediately take one z from the right hand side and change the problem as f of z by z. Now, the right hand side is 10 divided by z square minus 3z plus 2. Now, let us check the denominator power and numerator power. The highest denominator power is 2 and highest numerator power, there is no z term, so it is 0. So, I can say HDP is greater than HNP. Now, it is eligible to apply partial fraction method. This is the crucial step.
Now let us solve the problem. So the given function capital F of z is 10z divided by z square minus 3z plus 2. Now we have to simplify the denominator. Now simplify the denominator either using your calculator or manually. So z square minus 3z plus 2 is going to be z minus 1 into z minus 2. So I can rewrite this as 10z divided by z minus 1 into z minus 2. Now, as I said, write f of z by z is 10 divided by z minus 1 into z minus 2. Now, the problem is eligible to apply partial fraction. So, now I am taking this part 10 divided by z minus 1 into z minus 2. Since the power of z minus 1 is 1 and z minus 2 is 1, I can rewrite this as a by z minus 1 plus b by z minus 2. Now, we can take LCM. When we take the LCM, automatically the denominator get cancelled. Don't be a school student doing all these things. So, write the numerator alone. In the LHS, we have 10. In the RHS, we have A into Z minus 2 and B into Z minus 1. Once this is done, we have to find the values of A and B. It is very obvious you know how to do this. Next, we have to find A and B. To do this, you know we have to choose a value of Z. If I choose the value of Z as 2, then this term will become 0. So, I can find B. Similarly, if I choose Z equal to 1, then this term will become 0. I can able to find A. So, let us do 1 by 1. So, if I put Z equal to 1, B term will become 0 and we will be getting 1 minus 2 that is minus 1. So, 10 is equal to minus A. A equal to minus 10. Similarly, if I put z equal to 2, the first term will become 0. 10 is equal to 0, then 2 minus 1 is going to be 1. So, we have b. b equal to 10. Therefore, we found the values of a and b. Next, next we have to substitute the values of a and b in this equation. While you substitute, you have to write in a very legible way. For example, if a is minus 10, I can write it as minus 10, 1 by z minus 1 plus 10, 1 by z minus 2 because it is easy for us to apply the inverse. Now, let us write this. We know this is nothing but my f of z divided by z. So, I want to find z inverse of f of z. Now, I have to push this z to the numerator on the right hand side. If I push, I will be getting f of z is equal to minus 10 z by z minus 1 plus 10 z by z minus 2. My final answer is f of n that is nothing but z inverse of f of z. Now, applying z inverse on both sides will be getting this. And we know z inverse of z by z minus a is a power n. So, now, now z inverse of z by z minus 1 is either 1 power n or you can simply say 1. So, minus 10 into 1 power n plus 10 into 2 power n. So, 10 is common here. I can take this 10. I can write it as 2 power n minus 1 power n. Or you can simply write this as 10 into 2 power n minus 1. Both are correct because z inverse of z by z minus 1 is simply 1 power n. 1 power anything is 1. So, either you can go for this notation or you can use this notation. Both are correct. Hope you understand the problem. Let us see few more problems on the forthcoming videos thanks for watching subscribe to our channel and share to your friends see you in the next video bye bye